G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. We're up at Mudgeroo Bar in Queensland today, up in the hills in Mudgeroo Bar, with a lovely young lady called Marianne Holmes. Marianne, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, Marianne is a fabulous watercolour artist, a very, very talented lady, uh, has a tutor, won numerous prizes, uh, just some sensational work, been taught by some of the great masters in the world as well as far as watercolour is concerned. But your, uh, your background sort of came from your want to be a ballerina and then joining a bank but what actually happened was you really had a health crisis that brought you to the position as a watercolour artist. Can you tell me more about that please? It, it, it developed uh, and I was ill for about four years. I decided at that point that I was going to change my lifestyle completely. Mm -hmm. It really did shake me up and I really in the back of my mind had always express myself with little sketches and drawings and things like that and I, I thought I would like to go and learn how to paint. Mm -hmm. um, having not had any background of it at all I, I had no idea, you know, not even how to pick up a brush or colours or anything, uh, nothing, I had no knowledge. I went to TAFE College here on the Gold Coast yeah. for a beginner's course and from there I went off to the Bathurst University Summer Schools yep. and Toowoomba Summer Schools yep. and learnt from the masters I would call them here in Australia yeah. and probably in the world and I learnt a lot. Yep. Uh, it helped develop my skills. At, at, at that point I felt um, after I'd done, gone through the lot um, I I wanted to go my own way, make my own mistakes and learn from it sure. and continue on and that's what I've done. Well, I mean your work is just amazing, it really is, I mean you're, you're a master as far as I'm concerned as well, there's no two ways about it. Mm. But uh, we're going to start this today and this is really beautiful, I mean watercolour is a very unforgiving mistress in a sense when if you, get, mm. if you do get it wrong, it can be such a beautiful medium to work with. But it's one of those things that if you sort of make a mistake it's indelibly there for, for a long while. So. We're going to go yes. through the process of doing this with Mary Ann. This is a very, very talented woman that will show you a lot of the methodologies that you need to use to get one of these pictures the way that she's going to turn it out to be. So let's get on with this then. Okay, well, I'm working with a photograph here of a place called Angoulême in France, and it's a beautiful place. It, it's quite complicated drawing, but it will simplify as I paint it. I tend to be rather complicated with my drawing, just so that I don't lose my way, and then I, I paint rather loosely. 
Um, I hope you'll be able to follow it. Mm. Um, I'm about to start. Water first and a nice moppy brush uh, with, a, with a bit of a point. Mm -hmm. You always got to have that point there, don't you? Yes, you certainly do. And I just wet you over the really area that on, I... Don't you? Yep. Yep. Just throw the, the, the water on and let it run down because I want some of the sky colour yeah. to actually flow down into the building to connect it all. Okay, I'm just going to grab a bit of grey. Just throw it in that pan in there. Yep. Mix it up with a bit of water. Yep. Get it nice and light. And I like to mix it first so that it's prepared when I go to apply it to the page and I don't have to slow up and stop and remix. Plenty of water there, I can see that much. Mm. Oh, there you go. And you really just push it right in there, don't you? Yes. Just go for it. There's a lot of blue in this uh, painting, so I'm just going to throw a bit in now. For me today, I'm, I need sharp edges, so what I have to do is dry this, yep. wait for it to dry, and then I will um, go in and, and start working the background. Then I will work down left, and then across to the right, and then late, later on the foreground. So, so you, you'd use a hairdryer with that? I do all? have a hairdryer, yeah. but I don't actually like to use a hairdryer unless I have to because the paint tends to paint itself on the paper. Mm -hmm. And while you're painting, uh, while it's wet, it's still moving. Mm -hmm. It's moving now, yeah. and it will keep moving. Um, so unless I'm in a hurry, um, often when teaching, I have to because otherwise it wastes too much time. But um, in this situation, I will, I will dry it off so that I can keep moving with the painting, um, but it will actually keep painting itself. Now, as you can see at the moment, there's just a little hint of the color that I'm going to be using in the walls. Yes. And it's just a background wash. Yes. Well, let's let that dry then. And then once that's dry, we'll come back and get stuck okay. in the stage two. All right, fine. Sound good? That'd be right. lovely. Excellent. Thank you. So as far as your colours are concerned, it's really a matter of time and experience before you will realise, you know, I suppose if you're painting off a photo, a lot of artists are going there with quite dark colours, but as you said before, to get the effect of watercolours, you really want it to be quite subtle. Mm. Well, you know, it, uh, when it's in the background, you don't want it to sort of stand out too much because mm -hmm. obviously uh, it, it'll bring it forward too much. You, you've got to keep your cut colours cool and subtle mm -hmm. in the background and they get brighter as you come forward. Just with those few colours you've got going in and the, um, the softness in the background, the, the perspective of the picture's coming together already. My brush is a smaller brush. As I go to more detail, I, I tend to, uh, from larger brushes, work my way down mm -hmm. because I can get the detail better. The light source is sort of coming across this way, if anything, so those sides of the building will have to be darker. And that's actually quite important in watercolour, Certainly in any is. painting of course, but you actually leave the white of the paper to do that job for yes, you. Yes, you do, yeah. yes. Uh, it's, it, it actually can look very spectacular to leave white bits, it really is good. Yep. Now, as I said before, uh, when that paint starts to dry, I'll go in and put those little windows in very, very softly. Okay. And I will actually just use a tissue to soften down that green a little bit for the moment because I think it's a little bit too harsh. All right, I'm going to go with burnt sienna and a little bit of sepia just to get it started. Yeah, and you've actually picked up a bigger brush for that too? Yes, I have picked up slightly bigger brush. Because I'm working on dry paper now, yeah. the effect is sort of dry brush yeah. and you get that sort of the motley effect that you get from it. You really want to, you really want to leave that there, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. I like that. And there's obviously percentages of paint that you need within, you know, from the top area there that you've got and then you've used a lot more water in there to, to get the effect. To get the flow, yeah. yes. I'll, I'll 
as I go down, you'll see it'll flow on a lot easier. But mm. I wanted to get those first hard edges in yes. with just fairly dry paint. The photo is really just a guide, isn't it? I mean, the last thing you want to do. It is. Paint I, I don't like painting from photos all the yeah. time, but I don't have much choice when yeah. you know I'm here and these places aren't here. Um, <laughs> I can't go out in the street and paint. So. Sure often too difficult anyway overseas because you just have so many people and it's nice to go to quiet places and do it. Sometimes you've just got to let go and let it all happen I think. Yeah. All very loose and free at the moment. Um, I'll give it a bit of a blast with the water and let it flow a bit. Those colours become so translucent after a while. Mm. It's beautiful. So I'm going to be softening this area mm -hmm. as I go. And that really is just using more water? Uh, just using a bit of the, the purple too okay. um, to tone it down a bit. Getting into your uh, cooler colours? Cooler colours, yeah. So I want this to recede a little bit. This colour down here will become a lot stronger as mm -hmm. I go along. But you can't go into that. I'd rather let that settle a bit before mm -hmm. I go back. Now, when I get down towards the um, carriage, because the carriage is white, yeah. I want to go with a very strong colour behind it. Now, I'm going to mix a colour. I think I better just wipe off my palette a little bit. Make sure that palette's always clean. Try to, because otherwise the colours do tend to merge and make a mess of, you end up with mud, put sure. it that way. And mud is not what I want. I don't want mud on my painting either. Right, I was mixing cobalt blue and permanent rose. I'm, I'm just sort of following my brush really at the moment. What this will do will punch out. It's light, it's playing light against dark. Um, the white of the carriage will now stand out mm. because of the dark of the background. I've got some buildings in the background to finish off but I just wanted to get that in. It just gives me a bit of a guide as to where I'm going. All right, well, we're going to uh, leave Marianne to work on this for a little while longer and uh, we'll back, back later on when she's done a bit more work. Okay. So shortly. <laughs> I shall continue. <laughs> Well, as you can see, Marianne has made some great progress and she's probably putting in one of the more important features of the painting in, which was the horses and the carriage, which is obviously going to project a lot of the light and the depth in the picture as well. But yeah, that's looking pretty good at the moment. Thank you very much, Graham. This is probably the most fiddly uh, area yeah. that I have to be a little bit careful. So the thing that I find fascinating is that as you've painted those two gentlemen in that horse like that, you've left all of that white for the, uh, the light yes. in there, which is just great. I mean, most people to just paint the whole lot, but it's just those little bits of light that make that whole picture well, stick out. Yes, it sort of creates the effect that you want. Mm. That they've got straps and, and all sorts of things going on there. Yeah. And rather than paint it all in dark and then have to go over it with gouache or something, um, it it's better to try to leave as much white as you can. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have anything against gouache. I think it, it gives some great highlights. Um, but I, I do think that it's better to try to, to do that. Some of the purists get quite upset about the fact that you'll sort of override well, they used certain to. areas. Yeah, well, they used to. Uh, I don't know whether they still do. No, I, I tend to. I use it for highlights a lot. Just going to put in a bit of shadow work here so I know yeah. where I'm going. Okay. As you see, the, the wheels sort of run from about there, so I'll just put in, I'll put in a little bit there now, go back to it later. So I'm just going to spray it to keep the edge loose. Yep. And. Obviously, the tissues, there's a, you, you're quite hands on with your watercolours yes. as well. You're not afraid to get the tissue in there and drop oh, it no. back or pick something up? Well I find them very handy and if you are using tissues it's better to use the cheap brands at the supermarket because they don't have fibre in them that's likely to get onto your painting. Oh, right, okay. The softer ones have sort of a, a fibre through them that um, 
because that can stick to your painting. So. I didn't know that. Um, as the street's meant to be flat, uh, all the head, head high should remain the same right. right through the painting because you're on a flat street. Uh -huh. um, obviously, if it was children, they're going to be a bit shorter, but, but, but as far as perspective, perspective is concerned, right. the head height should remain the same throughout the painting. Okay. Well, for those people, that's, um, I think that's a very interesting fact. Let's put a few little people back there wandering around. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave that alone now for a while. Yeah. Leave all that alone um, and go to that side. To the roof area. Okay, now when you do the backgrounds, they really are a part of a platform to literally build the rest of the painting on. Would that be correct? Yes, that's correct. You, you don't want the background to feature. That is not your prime. You look. You, you, you want your focal point to be your feature. So your background's just a backdrop to what you're actually going to produce. Uh, in my case, um, the, the, the horses and cart and the red awning really just draw your eye and the rest of it is muted and soft and uh, just with a little bit of colour. But you know the image is there, you know what's there, but it's not definite. Mm -hmm. Now that area that you're working on right now, which is that dark area in the corner, in the top right hand corner. Yes. Those darker colours are really designed to pull the picture into the middle, is that correct? Yes, that's right. It helps with perspective. Um, it strengthens the foreground. It gives you that depth that you need uh, to show you that you're going from, you know, down a street, if you like. Um, if that was light, it would look bland. You've got to have that contrast. You've got to have that depth. And it'll, it just helps with perspective. Absolutely. And then you were referring to a thing called bling, and you're obviously working on the bling areas right now. And it's sort of like, now the McDonald's sign is sort of, you've got this great street scene, but it's still part of the street scene, isn't well, it? Well, it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, like, I don't care about stuff like that. I mean, it's all modern. Uh, let's face it, it's an old place, but in modern signs and everything, I don't ever mind putting them in. Telegraph poles, anything like that. I love, I love putting all that sort of thing in. I think it just adds to... Uh, a painting's feeling. Sure. Um, it, it, that's what modern life is, yeah. and there, there it is. And you, you know, you take gouache as well. Now, obviously, the the purists sort of tend to go a bit nuts about the whole thing, but you're using gouache now to obviously highlight the areas of around the carriage and the cafe and and the shoulders of the people. Um, I think it looks great. I mean, I don't see the problem with it, but there are some people that get all wigged out about that. Well, they may if they'd yeah. like to. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Uh, I quite, I quite like. Uh, it just lifts. Uh, it also just highlights the fact that there are people there without too much definition. Um, I don't go overboard with it. Yeah. I don't like to go overboard with it. It's not something that you use heaps of. But as you can see, as I'm doing it, um, I'm putting a bit of uh, gouache into the lights to uh, bring them forward. You know, to show them up a little bit. It just gives you the feeling of of light in the picture mm. and. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, leaving white is is definitely a must if you, if you can possibly do it in the painting. But the gouache certainly helps. Absolutely. Just to finish it off, the jewellery, as they call it, um, the, the it just it just helps to just to finalise it all, yeah. pull it together. And I, and I think also with the fact that you know you're using the the, uh, the little sprayer, your mister. That's a really important part of actually starting to finish this painting because you can mm. obviously start to see that reflection of the street mm. and the colours starting to move down and it's something that you really do use a lot to get the effect that you want. I certainly do. Um, I use it, look, I'd be lost without it. I could not work without my little spray bottle. Uh, I like to be able to move the paint around. I like to make it run um, and to merge and I can turn the board around in different angles and move the paint. And when I, like, when I first did the first wash, it was sort of the same thing. I moved the board around to get that merging of colour. And when I do the street, the same thing. Um, I, I want the colours to merge and blend and look um, soft and natural. And the spray bottle does all that. Mm. 
uh, when you get into the dry areas, of course, if you spray on those, you'll end up with a mess, but uh, usually just for, for streets and backgrounds and so on. That's I do. amazing. Yeah. All right, well, that was pretty amazing to say the least. Um, very, very talented lady. Thank you so much for being on the show, Marianne. Thank you, it Graham. Was, it Thank was, you, it was really my pleasure. It was wonderful. And to see that process of a, a real master put a piece of work like this together is pretty amazing. Um, a, a woman like yourself that's obviously had a great deal of experience, has travelled, there's, there's obviously a legacy that you're leaving. I mean, what, what would you like to say to other artists that are wanting to do this? I, I feel that, that if, if there's people out there that are starting off or are struggling with their watercolours, I hope that in some way this has inspired you to pick up that brush and have a go. Um, it's not an easy medium, but it's a very rewarding one. You, you really need practice, practice, practice. Don't be afraid of that sheet of paper. I know the feeling. You look at it and you think, ah, but what you need to do is think of it as just a piece of paper. You can tear it up and throw it away if it doesn't work. And try not to get too precious when you've drawn something. If you feel that you've drawn it and you've spent so much time drawing it, walk away for a day. Come back the next day when you're fresh and paint it then. But what I would say is, I hope that the few tips that I've been able to give you will help you. Miles on the brush is very important absolutely important. You're going to make heaps and heaps of mistakes. I make many and still do. And I have bad days and good days and always will. There, there's, no, there's no way out of that. It's, it's unforgiving. But I truly believe it's a beautiful medium and I hope I can give something back to people. That's wonderful. Well, well spoken and uh, great, great words and great advice from a, from a master watercolour artist. Now your website, if people want to get in touch with you, is? maryannholmes.com.au There you go, and if you want to come in. Now also, uh, if anybody wants to learn how to do this, uh, you can contact you through the website. Yes, um, through LinkedIn. Yeah, get, and get in touch with Marianne and LinkedIn as well. Facebook. Uh, yeah, if you want to come along and learn from a master artist, um, this is the girl to absolutely do that with. Uh, we're going to head off again, go down south now, <laughs> and uh, obviously see some other people. Uh, if you want to see more of what we're doing as well, you can come into colourinyourlife.com.au and see all of the amazing people in there. We've got tons of stuff in the shop for sale. There's lots and lots of people in these days. These <laughs> days. Our Facebook page as well, of course, Colour in Your Life. Uh, but until we meet again, remember, yes. make sure you put some colour in your life. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>